Civilized Charlie Hebdo's Civilized Charlie Hebdo's satire about those afflicted by recent earthquake. When it is the case that one good deed is written as teen good deeds and can multiply until it reaches 700 or more, then indeed the reward of exercising patience has no limits. For indeed Allah, glorified and exalted be he has said. Only those who patient shall receive their reward in full, without his ob, without limit, calculation and estimation. 39 colon 10 O messenger, say to my servants who have faith in me and my messengers, be mindful of your Lord by carrying out his commands and refraining from his prohibitions. For those amongst you who did good actions in the world is good in this world through divine assistance, health and provision, and in the afterlife through paradise. And the land of Allah is vast, so migrate therein until you find a place in which you can worship Allah without anything stopping you. The patient will be given their reward on the day of judgment without any counting or limit, due to its abundance and different types. AZ Zumer 10 In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Civilized Charlie Hebdo's satire about those afflicted by recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and another manifestation of the filth of extreme freedom of speech. Allah, the Most High, is said. And, remember, when Musa, Moses, said to his people. Verily, Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I take Allah's refuge from being among al-Jahilin, the ignorance or the foolish. 2 hours 67 minutes. From the stories of your ancestors, remember what happened between them and Moses, peace be upon him, when he told them that Allah had instructed them to slaughter a cow. Instead of hurrying to do so, they said, stubbornly, are you making fun of us? Moses replied that he asked for Allah's protection from being one of the ignorant people who lied about Allah and made fun of other people. Al-Baqarah, 67 A jahil, ignorant one, is that one who speaks with a speech that contains no benefit and he mocks at the people. As for a sensible person, he sees that one of the most blameworthy traits which he's abhorred by, sound, religion and intellect is to mock at someone who is a human being like himself. And if he has been favored over another person, then this favor necessitates that he thinks Allah and shows mercy to Allah's servants. Therefore, when Musa, peace be upon him, said this to them, i.e., I take Allah's refuge from being among the ignorant, they knew that it, i.e., what he commanded them, was truth, so they said. Call upon your Lord for us that he may make plain to us what it is, 2 hours 68 minutes. They asked Moses to call on his Lord to clarify what the cow they had been told to sacrifice was like. Moses told them that Allah said that it was neither old nor young, but was between the two, and he told them to do what Allah had instructed them to. Al-Baqarah, 68 An excerpt from Tafsir as Sudi Allah, the Most High, is said. There was a party of my slaves. Verily. There was a party of my slaves, who used to say, Our Lord. We believe, so forgive us, and have mercy on us, for you are the best of all who show mercy. But you took them for a laughing stock. So much so that they made you forget my remembrance while you used to laugh at them. Verily. I have rewarded them this day for their patience, they are indeed the ones that are successful, Surah al muminun Ayayat, 109-111. Until when death comes to one of these idolaters and he sees what is going to befall him, he says regretfully over his life that has escaped him and his deficiency regarding Allah. O oh Lord, return me to the worldly life. Perhaps I will do good actions when I return to it. Never. The matter is not as you requested. It is only a statement he is uttering. If he were to return to the worldly life, he would not fulfill what he promised. These people who have died will remain in a barrier between the world and the afterlife until the day of resurrection and rising. They will not return from it to the world, to make up for what they lost and to correct what they spoiled. Then when the angel appointed to blow the trumpet will blow the second time which will announce the day of judgment, there will be no relations between them to boast through. due to their being engrossed in the horrors of the hereafter, and they will not question one another due to their being engrossed in what concerns them. So whoever's scales are heavy because of his good actions outweighing his bad actions, those are the successful ones, by attaining their objective and being saved from their fears. And whoever's scales are light because of his bad deeds outweighing his good deeds, those are the ones who have wasted themselves by doing that which is harmful to them, i.e., disbelief and sins. And leaving faith and good actions that were beneficial for them. They will be in the fire of hell forever and will not come out of it. The fire will burn their faces. Therein, their top and bottom lips will shrink away from their teeth, due to severe frowning. It will be said to rebuke them, were the verses of the Quran not recited to you in the world but you used to deny them?
They will say, Our Lord, our wretchedness which had already passed in your knowledge overcame us, and we were a people astray from the truth. Our Lord, take us out of the fire. If we return to the disbelief and misguidance we were upon, we will surely have wronged ourselves and our excuse will be broken. Allah will say, Sit in the fire and stay in there disgraced, never speak to me. There was a group of my servants who believed in me, saying, Our Lord, we have believed in you, so forgive our sins and grant us your mercy, and you are the best of those who show mercy. You took these believers who called upon their Lord as a joke, mocking them and making fun of them. Until being engrossed in mocking them made you forget Allah's remembrance and you used to laugh at them, jokingly and mockingly. I rewarded these believers with success through paradise on the day of judgment, due to their patience on Allah's obedience and the harm they used to receive from you. He will say, How many years did you spend on earth? And how much time did you waste therein? They will reply by saying, We stayed for one day or part of a day, so ask those who pay attention to counting days and months. He will say, You only stayed in the world for a short period, in which it was easy to persevere upon obedience, if only you knew the length of your stay. So do you think, O oh people, that I created you as a plaything without any wisdom, so that there will be no reward or punishment as with animals? And that you will not return to me on the day of judgment for the reckoning and recompense? So pure is Allah, the King, who does as he wishes with his creation, and who himself is true, his promise is true, and his saying is true. There is no true deity besides him, Lord of the noble throne which is the biggest creation. He who is Lord of the biggest creation is Lord of all the creation. Whoever calls upon another god besides Allah for which he has no proof, and this is the case with every god besides Allah, the reward of his bad action is with his Lord. As he is the one who will reward him for it by punishing him. The disbelievers will not be successful in attaining what they desire and being saved from their fears. Say, O Messenger, O Lord, forgive my sins, grant me your mercy, and you are the best of those who show mercy. al Muminin 99-118 Allah informed us that he rewarded them for their patience, just as he had the Most High, said in another ayah. And we have made some of you as a trial for others, will you have patience? O Messenger! All the messengers I sent before you were humans who would eat food and walk in the markets. You are not a unique messenger in that sense. O people! I have made you tests for each other by granting you varying degrees of affluence, poverty, health and sickness. Throughout these different circumstances, will you bear whatever I afflict you with so that I may reward you upon your patience? Your Lord is ever aware of those who bear patience and those who do not, and those who obey him and those who disobey him. al 20 A.C. Zujaj, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, meaning, will you not exercise patience when afflicted and indeed you know what the patient ones will receive? Ibn al say, Allah, a glorify be he and one free is he from all imperfections, connected affliction with patience in this ayah and also in his statement. Then, verily, your Lord for those who emigrated after they had been put to trials and thereafter strove hard and fought for the cause of Allah, and were patient of Surah Anal Ayah 110. Then your Lord, O Messenger, is forgiving and merciful towards those oppressed believers who migrated from Mecca to Medina after being persecuted by the idolaters, to the extent that they uttered words of disbelief whilst their hearts were at peace with faith. Then they strove in Allah's path to make the word of Allah supreme, and the word of the disbelievers lowest and they were patient over its difficulties. Your Lord, after the persecution that they underwent, is forgiving and merciful towards them because they only uttered words of disbelief under duress. Anal 110 There is no remedy like patience for the one put to trial. If one exercises patience, then that trial becomes a source of purification and rescue from sins, just as the bellows purify gold and silver. Trials are the bellows of the hearts and the test for one's iman, and by way of it the truthful one is distinguished from the liar. Allah, the Most High, is said. And we indeed tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true, and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. Although Allah knows all that before putting them to test, Surah al ankabut Haya, 3. I tested those before them, so Allah will make clear and disclose to you the truth of those who were true in their faith and the lie of those who were dishonest therein. Or did those who commit sins such as idolatry and so forth think they will escape us and be saved from my punishment? Bad is the judgment they make, for they will not be able to make Allah powerless nor will they be saved from his punishment if they die on their disbelief. al ankabut 3-4. Trials categorize the people into truthful ones and liars, believers, and hypocrites, good and wicked. So, whoever exercises patience in facing trials, then this is a mercy for him or her, and a safety from a greater trial due to his or her patience.
and whoever does not exercise patience in facing a trial will fall into a trial more severe than it. An excerpt from Igathatta Lofton, 270-172. Filthy Statements Allah, the Exalted, stated. Evil words are for evil men, and evil men are, subjected, to evil words. Every evil man, woman, saying and action is suited to what is evil and conforms to it, and every good thing of that is suited to what is good and conforms to it. Those good men and women are innocent of what the evil men and women say about them. For them is forgiveness from Allah through which he will forgive their sins, and for them is noble sustenance which is paradise. Anur 26 Charlie Hebdo Cartoon in the above picture, they stated in French, did not even need to send tanks. Then they presented destroyed buildings, an overturned car and wreckage. This is the malice harbored in the hearts of French militant secularists at Charlie Hebdoville and spiteful Islamophobes. However, if it is the case that they even mocked at the most virtuous and noblest human being, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Then what else do we expect from them when dealing with others? Allah, the Exalted, said. Hatred has already appeared from their mouths, but what their breasts conceal is far worse. Ayah al-Imran, the family of Imran, the house of Imran, 3 118. O you who have faith in Allah and follow his prophet, do not take unbelievers as close friends, letting them know your secrets and private business. They will not stop trying to harm you and ruin things for you, wanting what will hurt you and making things really difficult for you. Their hatred and hostility has appeared in what they say, in their criticism of your faith and worship, in incidents between you, and in them giving away your secrets. In their hearts they have even more hatred. Allah has made clear to you what is in your interests in this world and in the afterlife, if you use your intellect to understand what your Lord has revealed to you. Ali Imran 118 However, the rightly guided followers of the Sunnah do not go into extremes, like the Takfiris, to physically attack these vile militant secularists. Rather we ask Allah to guide them or break their backs Amin. Some amazing affairs mentioned in Surah Al-Kaf, one reminder every Yom al -Jumu. Ah. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. Allah, the Exalted, said. And you might have seen the sun, when it rose, declining to the right from their cave, and when it set, turning away from them, to the left, while they lay in the midst of the cave. That is one of the ayat, proofs, evidences, signs, of Allah. He whom Allah guides, is rightly guided, but he whom he sends astray, for him he will find no wali, guiding friend, to lead him, to the right path. Surah al kaf Ayat 17 They thus fulfilled the instruction and Allah put them to sleep and protected them from their enemy. You Qun who looks at them, will see the sun when it rises from the east inclining away from their cave to the right of one entering it. And at the time of sunset it moves away from the cave towards the left, but does not strike it directly. They are therefore in perpetual shade unaffected by the heat of the sun. They are in a wide space within the cave where the air they require reaches them. The above mentioned occurrences viz. They are taking refuge in the cave, they are being put to sleep, the sun's deviation from them. The spaciousness in the cave and their salvation from their people are all wondrous acts of Allah that indicate his power. Whoever Allah guides to the path of guidance, such a person is rightly guided in reality. Whoever Allah forsakes and lets go astray, then you will never find anyone to help and guide him to the right path. This is because guidance is in Allah's hands and not in his. al kaf 17 Allah protected them from the sun by facilitating for them a cave in which when the sun rose, it declined to the right away from it, and when it set, it turned away from it to the left. So its heat did not come into contact with them and thus harm their bodies. While they lay in the midst of the cave, meaning, a spacious part of it, so that fresh air and breezes reaches them, stuffiness removed and not harmed by narrow space. Especially that they were staying there for a prolonged period. This is one of Allah's signs that demonstrates his power, his mercy for them, and the fact that he responded to their supplications and guided them even in these affairs. So, this is why Allah said. He whom Allah guides, is rightly guided is meaning, there is no path to acquiring guidance except from Allah. Because he is the one who guides and directs a person to all the welfare in this life and the next. But he whom he sends astray, for him you will find no wali, guiding friend, to lead him, to the right path, meaning. Neither will you find a guiding friend for him to look after him in a manner that will bring about welfare for him nor guide him to good, and success. An excerpt from Tafsir as Sudi. Slightly paraphrased.